Good morning, and welcome to St. Ignatius Parish in San Francisco. As we enter into worship, please rise and join together in singing our gathering song, The House That Love Is Building, which can be found on the front cover of your order of worship. Good morning and welcome to all of you. It's very good to be able to pray and to see so many people. So welcome all of you. And so we gather, as we always do, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We begin our prayer. We turn to the Lord and we invite that spirit that he promised to touch our hearts. We realize we're called but like all of us, we share in weakness. But none of this has ever stopped God from loving us. So we turn to Jesus, we seek his forgiveness and mercy that is always there. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. So now let us give praise and glory to God. Thank you. 
So let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you have set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many. Terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, sing the, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me. With your constant help, answer me, O Lord of bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your kind love, in your great love, answer me. See you lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his
his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted for when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetop. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. And whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord.
in the Constitution and the liturgy. One of the great gifts of Vatican Council II were some new things. <laughs> For instance, they encouraged the vernacular in the liturgy. <laughs> and for this, I am forever grateful. Yes, I spent nine years studying Latin and knew it well, but I love the fact that I can pray in my hometown language. So that was one thing that came out of this council. But in that same document, they also reaffirmed and reiterated some things that always have been believed by the church from the beginning. One is, when the word of God is proclaimed at the liturgy, it is God speaking to us today, challenging us, informing us, and really asking us to follow the Lord. <laughs> now, what we've got to realize the word of God is not just the Gospels. The word of God is the entire Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. And all of it is words that speak to us. Now, as I was preparing my homily for Sunday, Tuesday I went to a funeral mass, a beautiful funeral mass for Mr. Stoner. During the mass, his daughter said something. Her father was a Presbyterian, and he said, Catholics do not know the Old Testament. And I felt the same way. So I changed my homily. So what I'm going to spend some time is on the prophet Jeremiah. You know, we heard a snippet from Jeremiah in the first reading. But who is this man? What do we know about him? You know, we get a snippet, but how does it fit in with his ministry? What did he do? And so often as Catholics, people just do not know. Jeremiah was a prophet. That means he's really an apostle of the Old Testament. He was very reluctant. He did not want to be a prophet. He tried to get out of it, but God said, I am sending you. He's a saint. And I mean that. He's a saint. God called him. And very often as Catholics, we make a mistake. A prophet was not there to foretell the future. The mission of a prophet was to call the church community back to right relationship with God. That was the ministry. And if telling the future was a part of it, then fine. But the, my primary mission was to know and to bring the people back to right ministry with Yahweh. So Jeremiah was called. As a young man, he pleaded to God, I stutter, I can't talk. And God said, I will take care of you. I am sending you forth. And when you read Jeremiah, there are moments in his writings which are called the confession, which give a deep insight into the man himself. His loneliness, the pain. He wouldn't have been able to use this but in many ways, his call was a walking of the cross. Part of God's call to him, and he said, I do not want you to take a wife. And so for Jeremiah, there was tremendous loneliness. Unlike the great Isaiah, who had a wife and two children to whom he could go back for support, Jeremiah was alone. He loved Jerusalem. This is his home. He loved the temple where he was called. He gathers for prayer there. But God has told him, you are to announce that Jerusalem will be destroyed because you have ignored me and left my ways. Jerusalem will be destroyed. It kills him. 
He loves this city, but he's obedient to the commands of God. But some of the things that are really beautiful about Jeremiah, his anger at times. A number of times he really gets angry with God. And it just proves that God has broad shoulders. That doesn't stop God's love and call for Jeremiah. And so Jeremiah has to announce that the city is going to be destroyed. Then when the, after the first invasion, he goes with the exiles to Babylon. And there he is a real mission of bringing God's love to them, of being there, of trying to console them, reminding them that God is still with them. So this is Jeremiah, a great man. If you want to know another prophet that I love, Hosea. Hosea is, there is so much depth and dignity and passion with Hosea. Hosea was a great prophet of the northern kingdom. His wife had left him to become a temple prostitute. And God turns to Hosea and said, I want you to forgive your wife. I want you to bring her back to you as a living paradigm of my love for the people of Israel. And Hosea is magnificent in his compassion and his love and his tenderness. You know, one of the things is, as a youth, I spent a good number of years as a Baptist. Uh, I eventually didn't especially care for the church, and I returned to the Catholic Church. But let me tell you, one of the great gifts of that journey as a Baptist was a great love and knowledge of scriptures. It's really one of the great gifts in my life. And so I ask you as people, get to know the scriptures. You know, many of you, when you were raised, would say, you were told, ignore the Bible. All right, today, there's a great mission. Get to know it. Read the Bible. Have it something that is a part of our life. It is the word of God. And so, as you read it, you see how God worked in the lives of so many people and how God continues to work in our life today. Fine, Hosea, Jeremiah were called. So are we. In baptism, each one of us is called. And there's a special relationship with God. And so we gather. And we gather on a Sunday to renew that relationship. We need to be fed by the word of God, but also our chance to approach the table and to be fed by the body and blood of Jesus. It's what we need as a community. And then each one of us at the end is sent forth. Live out the faith that you have received. Be witnesses to Jesus Christ. So let us stand, and together as a community, using the Nicene Creed, let us make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God.
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God listens to our prayers, we offer these needs with confidence that our God will turn to us with guidance and consolation. For the church, that it respond to the needs of the human family with compassion and flexibility, searching for ways to help all people encounter the love of Jesus we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children who depend on religious institutions for education and as a pathway toward God, that teachers and administrators create spaces that are spiritually, emotionally, and physically safe so that young people can come to know the mercy and acceptance of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people, especially teenagers, struggling to reconcile their identities with the world around them, that family, friends, pastors, and teachers give them tools of prayers reflection and courage to live as whole and integrated people knowing they are created in the image of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved faithful departed, especially Dr. Susan Runyon, and Marlene Galino, that they be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kin kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that our hearts might be inclined to great honesty and partnership with the creative life force of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever-present God, through the gift of your Son, Jesus, you promise to bring all things into light. Hear our prayers, that with boldness we might proclaim your good news. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. This is the time when we'll pass the basket for our financial collection. Your support keeps ministry thriving at St. Ignatius. Thank you for your generosity. For those of you who are watching online, a link for electronic giving can be found in the chat. Thank you. As our gifts are gathered and prepared, please join in singing Fly Like a Bird, which can be found on page six and seven of your order of worship.
in my pondering and fears, in my joy and in my tears. Oh God, your presence is real. Fly like a bird to the Lord, my soul. I So pray, my sisters and my brothers, that this hour's sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all our holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, a grant that cleansed by its action we may make an offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by his birth, he brought renewal to our fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins, and by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, it's without end we acclaim. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. So now let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, all the clergy, and Lord, all the holy people, you've called together to be your church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So, so now as a community, we gather, and together we pray that beautiful prayer that Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles and friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom. We live and reign forever and ever. 
And so may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. So now let us share that wonderful peace of the Lord. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace be with you. Let us say our prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment so in all of our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, this is truly Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin of the world. How happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus keep us in God's love now and forever. Amen. And don't worry about her. It's her own little way of pray praying. So. <laughs> As we are united through the body and blood right. of the Lord, join together in singing Vine and Branches, which can be found on page 10 of your order of worship.
Please remain seated for the closing prayer and the announcement. So let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. Registration for the Children's Faith Formation 2023-2024 is open. And registration materials are on our website. Families whose children previously enrolled in CFF will be automatically re-enrolled. Any questions, please contact Lisa Fries. The hospitality hour after the 10 a.m. Mass on Sundays is growing. Thank God please consider volunteering once a month. You might bring a treat to share with others, monitor the plates and trash, cleaning items as we go, help clean up at the end. If you would like to help, please contact Barbara St. Marie at Hospitality. And now we have an update from our Director of Development, Emily McFarland. Good morning. For those of you I don't know, I am, um, my job is to make sure that the parish has enough resources for all our wonderful ministries. It's a great place to have this job and I'm really lucky to be here because we do have so many wonderful things happening in this thriving parish. I'm here to let you know, Father Greg uh, made an announcement starting on June 3rd that we had a bit of a gap to close before the end of our fiscal year on June 30th. On the 3rd, it was $280,000 out of our approximately $1.9 million budget. And I'm super excited to say that uh, since that time, 319 households have donated $280,000, which is super fantastic. So that leaves our remaining goal for the next five days $68,000 to close the budget in, a, in the positive and to make sure we go into our next fiscal year strong and ready to grow our amazing parish even more. So for those of you who responded to the appeal, I, I can't thank you enough. We're so grateful. And for those of you maybe who've been waiting and thinking, oh, I meant to do that, yeah, uh, I'm here to encourage you five more days. And my contact information is in the bulletin. Please reach out to me if you have any questions about ways to donate. Thank you so much. And as one of the parish priests, if I can again add to that thank you. Thank you very much. So now I'd like to introduce parishioners, Brian Byrne and Beth Lapichette, who will speak of Retrovi, a lifeline of troubled marriages. Good morning. I'm Beth Lapiche. This is my husband, Brian Byrne. We're parishioners here at St. Ignatius and presenters for the program called Retrovi. Retrovi is designed to help heal and renew married couples who are drifting apart, and it's available in this archdiocese. Brian and I have been married for 37 years. We have two children, a daughter who's 30 and a son, 25. During our married life, we have experienced many joys and many difficulties. Twelve years ago, we were having so many difficulties in our relationship that we were both thinking about getting a divorce. I remember the fear of us looking like failures and the embarrassment of admitting my marriage was breaking up. We didn't know who to turn to for help, and marriage counseling wasn't working for us. I found myself wanting to pretend that everything was just fine and under control. Fortunately for us, there were others who cared and had experienced our kind of pain. The couples and the priest who presented the Retrovi program to us offered no solutions, but only their caring and their experience. They gave us the courage in our darkest time to go on and not just to endure, but to grow, and we thank God for them. I had never heard of Retrovi. 
Luckily for us, a close friend knew we were having tough times, and they recommended that we go to a Retrovi weekend. Our friend wasn't Catholic. The Retrovi program is open to all couples. Retrovi is a peer ministry of couples like Beth and I, who've experienced hurt in their marriage, reaching out to other couples in similar pain. These couples attempt to offer hope as they share their personal stories of struggle, reconciliation, forgiveness, and healing. I'd like to emphasize that only the presenting couples share their stories. Those couples who attend Retrovi are only asked to share with each other. No one else will hear the details of your troubles. The next weekend for San Francisco Retrovi starts the evening of Friday, July 28th and runs through the afternoon of Sunday, July 30th. But we're only one Retrovi community. If it suits your calendar better to go to a weekend in Oakland, San Jose or Sacramento, then that's fine. There's usually an in-person or in online Retrovi weekend in Northern California every month. Please take a look at the information in the parish bulletin and on the Retrovi website. Please take a look at the information um, and read it for yourself and then refer it to friends and family who may need it. Beth and I will be at the Parker Street exit after mass if you have any questions about Retrovi. We would ask that each one of you here, single, widowed, religious, happily married, children, hurting couples, to pray for and work for the gift of healing in each home in this parish and in our archdiocese. Thank you. So Brian, Beth, Emily, thank you. And uh, I want to say, first of all, there is a reception afterwards. There's, you know, a chance to get together, please. It's important as we gather and share with others after Mass. Also, the bookstore will be open. So, music ministry, thank you for your ministry, your work. It's wonderful. <laughs> Servers, readers, ushers, anyone else, thank you. We couldn't do without you, but it's all a ministry in the church. And for all of you, have a very good day and God bless you. Please stand. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let's go forth now to give praise and glory to God. Sent forth by God's blessing can be found on page 11 of your order of worship. Please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God's Hey.